Well, the market is still very much preoccupied by the expanding global pandemic of coronavirus. It uh, may be going unnoticed that many companies continue to report progress on their own strategic targets. Add into this the big declines that we've seen in stock markets. The effect is to bring pretty much every single listed company down in terms of market capitalization, uh, disregarding what it is they, they may be putting out in terms of some of the positive news headlines. So where are the opportunities? Let's take a look in some more detail now at the mining sector with John Mayer, a partner and mining analyst at SP Angel. Uh, John, good to talk to you again. Uh, what are your observations on the markets at the moment? Well, it, it looks as if there's quite a strong recovery coming in, into play now. And um, we've seen certainly some very positive momentum in the last few days. Investors can at last see an end to the coronavirus crisis. And whilst that might not be a, a sort of immediate uh, hard stop end to the crisis, and we may bumble along through various forms of lockdown for a while, we can at least see economic recovery around the corner. I just want to bring up a chart of the FTSE 350 mining index, which I think is worth looking at in terms of some of the progress we've made over the last few weeks or so. We've gone from the recent lows that we saw when we were at, uh, towards the end of March. We've seen a rise of some 28 and three quarter percent. But I still nonetheless put it to you that perhaps maybe this may be a little bit too early in terms of uh, this move that we've seen. You mentioned the fact that there is some visibility now to the end of the corona crisis. But in terms of what we've got in some of the uh, economic background, we're talking here and now possibly about a really big, serious pullback in terms of market activity represented by a possible global recession over the first two quarters of this year. And of course, we have already seen now uh, news coming out, negative news coming out from the European Union, the finance ministers failing to reach an agreement on how to deal uh, with the fallout from the pandemic. Um, China is still easing that we know about, although Wuhan, the epicenter of the global crisis, has just come out of, of, of lockdown. But there's no end to the economic stimulus because central banks and governments know we're nowhere end, uh, nowhere towards the end of this economic uh, uh, crisis that's come out of this. Well, we've added up a, about $11.9 billion of, of pledged stimulus. So that stimulus that is, that is pledged but may not necessarily be spent, we expect actually more to come through as, as countries offer different types and, and new varieties of stimulus to really focus more on small businesses because it's many, many small businesses that are being affected by the lockdown and the virus in effect. And, and we're still not out of this and, and so there's much more to be done. But uh, we can see that, that there is funding coming in, we can see support coming in, and policymakers know when they look at the history of what happens after pandemics, that they need to put in enough cash to create inflation and to avoid a, a depression type environment. Okay, so, so far as you're concerned then, where are the opportunities now being represented? Uh, I know you've got a number of clients on your books and I know you want to talk about some of those, but in, in is there a, before we get to the individual stocks, is there a, a part of the mining sector that's doing better than others? Well, certainly the gold sector is good because the gold price is up three, four hundred dollars since the beginning of the year, which is a, a great performance for gold. And with all this new money printing coming into the market or expected coming into the market, we can see the gold price being supported by this in terms of the inflationary impact just from the new cash being printed with it within various economies. So. Uh, gold is good, and, and on the back of that, certain stocks within the mining sector, I think, will do well. Other stocks to do well will also be stocks that are related to the supply of commodities for new infrastructure projects, because policymakers know that infrastructure projects help stimulate and drive new growth. And, and I think these are going to be key uh, policy areas that uh, not just the UK will follow, but the US and China. OK, we are getting a little bit of break up on the audio side, but we'll persist with this because we're hearing much of what you're saying. But let's um, talk about some of the individual stocks and that you're looking at here, which could benefit from what you perceive to be the advantages at the moment in the markets for these stocks. As I said, quite frankly, have been beaten up beyond all recognition in some parts. Well, we had a bit of a credit crisis when, when the, as the coronavirus, coronavirus came over to towards uh, the West, the US and Europe. Uh, there was such a rush to sell everything. It created a, a liquidity crisis and a credit crisis, certainly in, in relating to the bond markets, and, and markets froze up. And so the Federal Reserve threw a huge amount of liquidity into markets to free that up. 
But in that process, particularly while we had the oil rich sovereign wealth funds suddenly dumping stock into the market when the oil price crashed, we then saw um, prices at very distressed levels. Market makers didn't want to take on, on, on any risk. And so we're very defensive on their books and, pri and, and share prices collapsed to, to ex extraordinary levels. I, and what the recovery that we've seen so far, I think, is just a, a bounce back from that. And now we're seeing a bit more of, well, institutions buying back in and supporting their favorite stocks. And we've certainly seen a certain amount of, of that in the marketplace over the last couple of weeks. Let's take a look at stocks that you are, are looking at at the moment in terms of potential opportunity then. Well, Solgold, for example, they came out with a, a new resource increase yesterday. So the scale of their Alpala in Ecuador has got bigger. Uh, the value of it, therefore, should be better. And there's a bit more detail in, in the work they're doing. And that's important because the more detail they add, the more value they create, in, in my view. So they issued a PEA, a preliminary economic assessment, uh, at the, back at the end of last year. That showed about four, four and a half billion dollars of value. If we discount that back, because it is still a PEA, we would we would estimate that to be worth about a billion dollars as a project right at, at this point in time. It still gives investors about a two and a half up percent, uh, two and a half times upside. And the great thing is, there's about 22 million ounces of gold in this project. Now it'll take some years to mine that, and in fact, this is still a, some years away from development. But it's an awful lot of gold to recover in an environment where investors are keen to buy into gold. What's your relationship with Sol Gold? We are a financial advisor and UK broker to the company, and we've been working with them for about 15 years now. Let's move on to uh, your second stock pick. Before we went to air, we were discussing um, the um, the outlook and you were talking there about uh, what's happening in China. I know you want to talk about Bushveld Minerals. Yesterday was a phenomenal day for Bushveld Minerals. Again, this is a, a, a client of yours, I know. Well, yes, and I, I do wonder, you know, it, sometimes there's no smoke without fire and a 40, 41 percent move yesterday was was exceptional. Now, I think there has been good ongoing underlying institutional support for this stock. Um, and, I, and I do think the company is well set. I've, I've had a number of discussions with the company recently. If, for, uh, and God forbid it, the, um, the, the lockdown in South Africa persisted for, let's say, six months, the company has sufficient cash reserves to see it through to September and beyond. And so it's, it's, it's relatively well secure and well set. And, and so the investors in this company, I think, are, 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 are committed to it. And the vanadium that they produce is, is a very important for uh, hardening of steel. And of course, structural steel will be very important for the reconstruction and rebuilding of, of economic growth in the West and in China going forward. So we can see uh, vanadium prices already moving ahead in, in Europe uh, and in China. And that's partly because some of the the byproduct vanadium production has come out of the market uh, and also because some of the preliminary the preliminary production in South Africa has cut back. So Bushfeld and Glencore are currently on on care and maintenance with regard to their vanadium operations. And that's just part of the what, I, what we hope will be a relatively short shutdown in South Africa. Yeah. And again, as I said, you, you do have a relationship, don't you, with with Bushfeld Minerals? Is that right? Yes, we're nomad and broker to Bushfeld. Yeah. Um, just one final question. Uh, what are the risks at the moment do you perceive in the market? As I said at the top, clearly these companies, like we mentioned, uh, the most recent announcement from Solgold, really good example of a company moving ahead with its strategy and, and doing so positively. Uh, but what are the risks at the moment as you see them? We talk about the potential end to the corona. Uh, virus crisis, um, we're hearing there's some virologists possibly even talking about a second wave. Um, what do you perceive to be the uh, the sort of concerning elements about what's happening? Well, I'm not an expert in, in virology, but we do have a, a team of healthcare experts at SP Angel who, who've been advising us uh, over the last few months. And I do have a friend who's uh, working in this area uh, for a small company in Oxford. So, so we have some idea. I think this idea of a, a second wave, uh, I don't think we'll see a second wave in the way that we did with the, uh, the, 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 flu, the Spanish flu pandemic um, back uh, after the Second World War, sorry, after the First World War. 
because I just don't think this is like that. Coronaviruses are much more stable. They've existed in bats for for thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years. And and the mutations, I think, are relatively low. I think what, what people are talking about when they refer to a second wave is we might get, we'll end the restrictions on the lockdown. People will go out and do things again. And then there will be a, a, a second and maybe a third and fourth set of, of viral infections as it moves through the community. And as governments like the UK government and the US government move to allow the virus to to work its way through so that we do develop a herd immunity eventually. So mm. I think the, the coronavirus is going to be with us through most, most of this year, if not the whole of this year, to varying degrees. But what they're trying to do is ensure that the NHS can manage the, the sick people who have to who end up going in. And uh, mm. we have to hope that Boris Johnson is, is, is well soon. Yeah. OK, uh, indeed. Uh, look, John, we'll leave it there. But thanks indeed for joining us. Uh, John Mayer is partner and mining analyst at SP Angel.